Hi Simon, we've got some questions from the 2000 AD Facebook and Twitter accounts, if you don't mind answering a few of them. Werner Graham asks, Any particular inspiration for the art of Ampli Crucius? It looks remarkably different from the usual 2000 AD style. I tried to uh, give it a, a feeling of the sort of the 1920s illustration of that time, sort of quite bright, flat sort of colours and uh, very sort of um, optimistic palette, even though that the story was not necessarily particularly optimistic. Billy Degg asks, what artists and illustrators inspire you? Uh, I, I grew up reading a lot of the sort of Sherlock Holmes books and Sidney Paget did, used to do some amazing, uh, I suppose they're, uh, I suppose they're ink drawings, but maybe they're engravings, but I think they're ink drawings. But anyway, I really loved how he used to illustrate particular points within the story. And uh, so I tried to uh, I tried to sort of um, look at those, not necessarily uh, consciously, but they were sort of I was aware of that sort of thing. And uh, going back through some of the sort of golden age illustration of detective fiction, particularly uh, American stuff, and that's probably what influenced doing the Lay and Decker inspired covers and whatnot. And uh, yeah, but. Uh, Generally, sort of, uh, and sort of things like the um, uh, railway posters and stuff like that. There's bright, flat colours. And so, Greg Patterson asks, why did you give Finnegan Sinister a big red nose? I gave him a red nose because uh, when I initially David Milgate was the first artist to work on it with uh, Dan, and uh, when I first started working on it, uh, I got the sort of character. Um, breakdowns from Dan and he said that Finnegan was uh, used to drink a lot and uh, so I was a young I was a young artist then so I thought let's go literal so I thought well I'll give him a, a red nose for that and he had his white skin so I thought it looked sort of uh, graphically quite interesting that he was white and a bit of a clown sort of character so. Jake Ripper says how does it feel to be the only artist that can paint a character blue and no one thinks it's strange? Well, I think that is firstly very nice to say that, and but I think I quite like palettes within stories. So if, if uh, like, I think I've sort of sort of treated these, may, and maybe this was sort of a way of, of uh, a nod to the sort of old films, old detective films and stuff, is to, if there was, if there was sort of action going on in the night or something like that, then everything, the whole palette was blue and stuff. So it was, you know, it made it look sort of, uh, I do, uh, yeah, made, made it look sort of um, nostalgic perhaps. But uh, yeah, and I, but I think you can, I think you can do it in comics. You know, it's not a literal form particularly. So I think you can do whatever you, whatever colour you want to do really. The Hulk's green. <laughs> That's terrible. <laughs> Rob Mead asks, what character that you haven't worked on would you like to? Well, I've, um, well, luckily, um, the one character I have wanted to work on to, it seems like I am going to, is, which is Slain. So I'm very excited about that. Non 2000 AD characters, uh, I think uh, Hellboy would be fantastic, but not interior art. I'd like to just do a cover or one-off illustration or something like that. It's a fantastic creation and, uh, but yeah, that's about it, really. Gareth Hopkins, who's at GR Think, asks, Anthony's got a great range of facial expressions. What do you use for reference? I use myself and friends and family and everybody who will, uh, who uh, so show a surprising amount of uh, enthusiasm for being, you know, <laughs> dicking around, really. So, uh, yeah, so it's it's that, and I, and uh, I sort of when I first started working in comics, I always sort of used photo reference, and uh, it's a good way of getting character consistency, and uh, and it's you know it's an extra dimension for me personally to uh, really enjoy that part of the process. At Adam Lunsden, wonders what first inspired you to use watercolors for comic book art. Uh, when I was. Um, Apart from uh, business work, the the work that I really liked was uh, stuff by, say, Bill Sinkovich and John Muth and Kent Williams in their American comics, the 
Bill Sinkovich particularly say he's a lecture assassin and uh, and um, Kent Williams and John Muth's Havoc and Wolverine were fantastic pieces of work and uh, it was just, watercolour is or in my case gouache is just a very quick way of painting and the colours are very true and very solid and reliable and uh, it's just a good way of uh, it's just a good quick way of painting but I've, I've always just done that it took a long time to sort of get able to paint consistently over a whole run of a story but uh, once you've got your your basics under control then it's fine <laughs> what does that mean <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> Paul Williams, whose handle is at Paul Williams Art, asks, "What's your personal favourite strip art-wise that you've produced so far?" I think my favourite, I think, has to be uh, Anthony Cruces because it was sort of like a, it, it was the first time that there's something that I really, really love, which is sort of Golden Age detective fiction, Agatha Christie and uh, Dorothy L. Sayers and people like that, and. Uh, I've worked. Well, I worked with Ian on Stone Island, and I really enjoyed that too. And we seemed to work very well together. And uh, so this was a really, this was the first time I sort of had a germ of an idea gone to Ian, and he's liked it too, and he's just sort of taken it off in his direction, which was always fun. And uh, so yeah, so definitely Anthony Crucis. It's the first time I've uh, I think it's all come together. Good idea and a good. And a, you know, and good stuff to draw. Comics Matter asks, "What has been the most challenging strip that you've worked on?" I think the most challenging strip was anything to do with dread has been challenging because I think I've you know I just I mean I love the character and I love what the stories has been in, but whenever I've done the character for some reason I just can't because I draw quite literally and. Uh, use a photo reference and and uh, the like you very quickly realize that that suit wouldn't work and uh, I think sort of look at stuff, particularly like Cam Kennedy's and Bolland's and Henry's work Henry Flitt's work on it you just think those people are so suited to the subject it's almost they make it look just effortless and uh, whereas I'm slightly more uptight, literal, OCD-ish sort of uh, artist that my style just doesn't fit it. I like, you know, I, do, I like the occasional covers I've done and stuff, that's fine. 